Hello, I'm Locke Meredith. I'd like to invite you to join me on the next Legal Lines where my guest is Louisiana State Treasurer John Schroeder. John is going to talk to us about a program that is called the Unclaimed Property Program. This is a program where folks over the years didn't get money that they were supposed to and it's been given to the state treasurer to hold. They've had over 1.3 billion, still over 500 million not picked up. Go to the Louisiana State Treasurer's Office and see if you do some money. Join us on the next Legal Lines with John Schroeder. At Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates, it's an honor and a privilege if you choose us to serve you. We serve you with respect, dedication, and an unwavering commitment. We serve you by working hard and striving to get you the best possible results. We serve you using 60 plus years of legal knowledge, experience, and relationships. At Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates, we believe that life is about relationships, and it's the mission and ministry of all of us to serve you. Lock Mayor to Sean Fagan and Associates has served our community by airing Legal Lines, a community educational program for 18 years weekly to Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas. Watch Legal Lines at LockMeredith.com or Cox Channel 1004. Hello, I'm Lock Meredith, and I'm very pleased to inform you that I have on the show for the very first time the treasurer for the entire state of Louisiana, John Schroeder. John, it's a pleasure you having you here. For the first time, I look forward yeah. to kind of getting an update on what's going on in the world of uh, money in our state budget and, and all of the hats you got to wear and how we're doing. But based on everything I've read, it's wonderful what you've accomplished uh, in, in the short time you've been there. But first, tell folks about you. Uh, let them know a little bit of your history. I know you were in the legislature for 10 years, but kind of just fill them on who John Schroeder is and then take us up to... Well, I, I, you know, I'm one of the few people that can say they've loved everything they've ever done. You know, my first career was in law enforcement. I was in the military. I was in narcotics work and uh, had a very serious eye injury when I was around 28, 29 years old. And, and I had to change my entire career and balked upon the business world. My father was an entrepreneur and car dealer out of New Orleans and in real estate. and. I went from painting and <laughs> just every nasty job you can have, I did it. You know, my wife and I both, and I've uh, been married. Uh, I played football at Southeastern for a little while, grew up in Metairie, and uh, met my wife, who's from White Castle at Southeastern and Hammond. Ellie, and, I think. Huh? Ellie, yeah, and she, she wasn't too much into the, to the, to the city life, so I've lived in the country my entire adulthood. and. Uh, we'll be married 35 years here soon. We Congratulations. Have, we have two adult children, uh, two uh, grandchildren, more to come. And some crazy thing led me to uh, politics um, about 12 years ago. I served 10 plus years in the House of Representatives. And when uh, John Kennedy ran for U.S. Senate, I ran, I won. You know, but my background, I'm an entrepreneur. I spent uh, my 10 and a half years in the legislature working on budget and processes and how do we do things better don't tell me how we why we do them the way we do them because that all that answers because we've always done it that right, way tradition. so i've just bought brought some some energy and and not fearful of change to this process um we've had some outstanding outcomes and man i'm i'm excited to serve i, I believe strongly in service and um I've been able to fill that void, Locke, to be honest. You know, being in the military, then being in law enforcement, uh, I've been able to serve the legislature and now yeah, state you've been treasurer. On a few sides of this, uh, this yeah, whole world. Yeah, you know, I'm a different kind of guy that get, typically gets in these jobs. Well, so, you know, you mentioned that you, you were in the, the military and it was the Army. What did, specifically did you do? I saw that it was criminal. Yeah, I started off, uh, um, I went from infantry to military intelligence to the CID, which is the Criminal Investigation Division. They have a narcotics arm in that group, and that's what I did. And then you also have served as a sheriff's deputy in St. Tammany? Yeah, when I had my eye injury, when I left the Army, came back to Louisiana, um, I was in Ascension Parish, and I worked on the Louisiana Drug Task Force. I did a lot of undercover yeah. work. Um, but one day I realized, you know what? Um, it was, it, I, I was watching the weaponry change. It was getting dangerous. And I don't know if it was me having children or I was getting older, um, but I, it was a different, it, I could see the world changing and boy, what has it changed to? Boy, I carried a snub nose. The world is not the world we were born oh, into. I, I carried a snub nose 38. 
they're not carrying 30, 38s anymore. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a war zone. So It's an interesting world yeah. we're growing up in. Well, let me, so, so most folks, if they've watched the show at some point in time, they understand the legislative, legislative process, but you got the governor, you got the House, you got the Senate. And then the courts rule on whatever needs to be ruled on uh, if there's a dispute. But you were on a very powerful committee at the House side. Explain that. So, because it gave you your background in a lot of ways, <coughs> in addition to yeah. your your businesses, right? On assuming to the role of uh, yeah, I sat, I sat on appropriations committee that handles all the money for the state. I sat on a joint budget committee. Uh, so all the finances of the state. I was uh, involved in that. Which is and, a $30 billion budget yeah, annually, right? 30, 30, and it's growing every year. Right, so. sadly. But I, I really just dove off the cliff, basically, as a young freshman legislator. But I wasn't young in the sense I was 47. Right. Had, had some business experience um, with my wife and I in the construction business and real estate and retail and rentals and she builds houses. I have a real estate company. So, I mean, we, we've, we've, we, I brought a lot of practical common experience, sense, common sense to the life. table. It's great that, cause that, we need it there. And, and look, I think my best trait is I treat your tax money like it's coming out of my pocket. And I truly treat every penny like a dollar. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, and I can't just uh, demand my my way. Right. But but I believe we all influence, and, and and look, the state workers have responded, and and we got a great team. Uh, I've, I've accumulated now that I just got reelected for a full four years because I only serve in 23, 24 months. So now that I'm there, for, uh, I know I'm going to be there for four years. We, we, we've now have our full team in place, and I'm looking forward to just working. Well, well tell me, so what, what was the reason that you ultimately said, I'm going to run for treasurer? I think that is the place I can do the best All right. good for, for Louisiana. I think what I realized as a legislator and sitting on the joint budget and the budget and appropriations Because it's a the statewide yes. held position, whereas yeah. you were a— uh, a house rep from among Saint, several, I imagine. Yeah, from St. Tanny Parish. Yeah, so, not the largest yeah. parish or largest population. I, you so know, that's a huge jump. You know, look, I just, I'll be honest with you, a lot of it was just a God thing. And I put Amen. my I faith where, where, where I said, you know what, I had served 10 plus years. Um, I had done everything that I could do. I, I, I well, worked, you guys have term limits. Yeah, we have term limits, but I put everything I had into it to, to the, to the, um, um, which had some negative side on my business side and my family. Right. And um, Senator Clater has told yeah. me, you know, definitely so hurts business. I, I decided, you know, I, I, not that I'm an expert in any stretch of the imagination, but I, I had worked my way up to where I knew about, much about that process as anybody. I, I, I knew where our problems were. Um, and I felt like as treasurer, I could influence the policy more than being one vote. Some people said, well, now you have no vote. I said, no, I don't. That's no, yeah, I don't agree with that. I, but, but now I can influence policy. Right. I speak all over this state um, and sometimes leave the state. Well, you're under the executive branch of the government, are you not? No. It's an independent Well, I guess office. technically. We're, it's Maybe an constitutionally, yeah. but you're it, independent. I, yeah, I'm a statewide elected official, right. just like the governor is. Or the and, attorney um, general. Or the um, attorney general. There's six Jeff of Lane. us. All right, well, so, so you're, you've been elected. First of all, um, you know, I, as I was reading, uh, you had an amazing list of folks who were supporting you. You had, I think, 150 going from United States Senator Bill Cassidy to current U.S. Senator also uh, John Kennedy, who was the treasurer, mm -hmm. uh, along with his first assistant and just scores of other national and local leaders. Um, and, and so it was quite a, a I guess, once you cleared the first hurdle, you'd made a runoff, and then you won the election. Right. How'd you do this next next shot? Well, we did very well. And, uh, you know, we worked hard, and, and a lot of credit, you know, your family gives up a lot. A campaign well, statewide is difficult. And, but we were basically three years with, I mean, because we served for two, and we were, we, you know, a year into it, we're back at the, on a campaign right, trail. That's a so. lot of work. Well, well, we'll continue this on the next segment. This is Lock Made Up with Legal Lines with my very special guest, the treasurer for the entire state of Louisiana, John Schroeder. Be right back. Hi, my name is Mitchell Meredith. I'm one of the associate attorneys here at Lock Meredith, Sean Fagan & Associates. One of the reasons I love this firm 
is that the moment you walk through the doors, you're so much more than business. You're family, which means we're going to fight for you as if you're family. At the end of the day, I think what distinguishes our firm from others is we're a firm that is truly personal, professional, and proven. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith. Again, very pleased to have on the show for the very first time, John Schroeder. He is the treasurer, basically the banker for the state, for the entire state of Louisiana. John, let's dive back in, okay? Yeah. So you win, you ran initially, took over uh, U.S. Senator John Kennedy's last two years or so, and ran again. You've been in now, what, another year? No, it's only we just got elected and was sworn in in January, oh. so it's been a couple Obviously, months. Okay. Yeah. All right, so... so Tell it's a it's a big job. I don't think people have a clue how many hats the state treasurer has to put on and kind of what the big picture is and, and right. the little picture. So what are the various tasks? Right. What what are the big picture tasks that the treasurer? Well, we does? manage a cash flow of close to forty billion. We invest forty billion. Forty with a billion. B. Um, uh, we we invest around six plus billion in trust funds, where that money is used for different entities of uh, state government. Um, we have the, which... Quick question. Do yeah. any of those, um, just the interest or earnings, support the entire expenditure? Or is it just like rainy day, it sits here and the legislature's go come get it one day? No, it, it's going to, a, a, it's dedicated to something. Okay. It's, it's dedicated to something. Uh, so, so you have that, um, I call that the financial side. Then we have the investment side. Uh, we have... That invest and that's six billion money. or that's so. Six you said? billion, but they're also investing on a daily basis. That cash flow, that money management on a daily basis, and we do that with the helps of a lot of banks, okay. obviously. Um, so you have the which a lot of the uh, politicians know about is the bond commission, right. which that's where all the money gets doled out for for capital outlay projects, which is a, one of the areas I have great heartburn on or in. Um, and then, capital outlays, explain that to yeah, folks capital so, outlay, in lay terms. Yeah, it's basically uh, a projects, municipal, uh, state, roads, bridges, things like that. Um, but it's also where legislators get their pet projects done. And So there's a lot of political influence. It's, it's really, it really needs to be reformed. And as, as a legislator, I fought for it just about every year. And so, um, so the bond commission... You're, in essence, you're trying to get loans, in essence, for a little bitty town or city up to the biggest city, New Orleans or Baton Rouge, yeah, so not and only, then state agencies? Yeah, so not only does the state have to go to the bond commission to get their loans approved, but every political subdivision in the state of Louisiana, whether it's a municipality, school boards, uh, water districts, public hospitals, they have to go get approval from the bond commission before they can borrow money. And a bond is just basically a loan. A loan. It's right? a loan. Correct. It's a loan. And so so that's, a, that's a major, major part of our job. In fact, we had a, a, a meeting today, which is why you caught me in a coat and tie, or, <laughs> or I'd be a little bit more. Me too. I, I'd probably be in my real estate attire, I got as, it. I, as, as I tell people. Well, and there's what, 14 members, and it's the governor's got somebody. It's basically all the legislative folks, House, Senate. And you got the governor. Yeah, it's, and it's the leadership of, of state government from the governor down. Uh, and I chair that commission. So a lot of money. Um, there, there's some things that, that I'd like to see um, fixed. You know, that's where we spend the money. And, and look, debt is a major problem, which we'll talk about that later. But that's and then we have the administrative side in the department uh, uh, where, where I sit with my team. And then my, 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 my favorite of all is this thing we call unclaimed property. It is really lost money. And that's probably where I'm able to use my entrepreneurial skill set better than anything. Do you invest that money too? Um, it's, it's not invested. It sits, uh, it sits in an in a interest account just like a, a money market a, a, type a, phone or well, something. Well, not even a money market, Treasure. but it sits like a checking account would do, and you, okay. and you get simple interest right. on it. Um, Which is nothing right now. Yeah, so that's probably where you see some of the biggest changes in this department. You know, when I got there, we were averaging about 32,000 claims. 
uh, my first full fiscal Explain year. Explain to folks. A claim is if you want, if you think you seeing something that that might be your money, yeah. it's due you. You got to fill out a claim. Yeah, you can, and they can actually go online and look at it. They could right. go to latreasury.com, click on uh, unclaimed property, and just follow the directions. So when you search that site and find your name, and it says you owed money, you file a claim. When I got there, we were asked. Is there any deadline, prescriptive period, not a right time now. within which you have to? Not right now, but is I, that being contemplated well, by the legislature? Well, I, I would argue that the way what they've done with the money that doesn't get returned, they've created it with, even without the authority of law, in my opinion. So what happened is when I get there, they're doing about thirty-two thousand claims a year. Uh, my first eight months in office, because we have fiscal years, right? I was there for the last eight months of that fiscal year. We did 42,000 claims. My first So up over 10,000? Yep. Is that right? Yep. Then my first 12 months, my first full 12 months, we did 207,000 so claims. So how, how did you make that happen? Because I did, Technology. have done shows with, with us. Kennedy, 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 nobody even knew about uh, unclaimed property until Kennedy. But Kennedy didn't have that technology right. that I have. And, um, it changes every nanosecond. It, it, it is, and it's changing. And, and I could see a day where you're not going to be able, I don't know if all this money comes to the state because you're not going to be able to hide. You're not going to be able to get lost. They'll be able to follow you everywhere. But we went from, from doing $23, $25 million, we jumped all the way to, to around $52 million. That and, was dispersed to folks who said, yes. I think that's mine. Y'all said, yep, yep, here you go. Yep. And Did so, I read that one guy got... Millions of dollars? Five million. And and last year we well, hit how much he has before <laughs> that came to him. And, 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 and remember now, this money's lost. So I guess through technology and processes. It makes sense what you're saying. Um, we you can, can return more money. And um, and I'm gonna ask the legislature to do a couple things. You know, I'm gonna ask them to um, you know, there's a dispute whose money this belongs to. But there's no dispute in my mind. This money belongs to, to somebody. It does not belong to the state of Louisiana. I mean, you've read the laws and you've had attorneys, I assume, yes. give you guidance. Yeah, but they've done it like this for so long. And like I, what? That whatever money doesn't get returns being spent in the state general fund. And they've been doing it for a long time. But, but only technology has forced somebody to stop and look, check the process because this is what happened. In September 2018, when we implemented some some new laws and technology, we were short $20 million worth of claims. So you I, had more claims than you had money. 82,000 claims. I needed $20 million. This money isn't sitting in some fund. I bet that's the first time that ever happened. It had never happened before. So I had, I had to call meetings with the leadership. Well, they couldn't give me money. They don't have the lawful ability to give me that money. So I figured out a way to do it. I said, you know what? Let's create a trust fund. Let's keep this money in the trust fund, and then we will always protect your money. And then you can take the dividend, okay? Because the law doesn't. So, so you'll will invest it then, or yes, get some We'll, we'll invest it, and, and it could average a five percent return. And then you can take that dividend, let it go to a general fund, and the government can do with what they want. All right, we'll then. continue on the next segment. This is Lock Merritt with John Schroeder, the treasurer of the state of Louisiana. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Sean Fagan. And you know, one of the most important considerations in hiring an attorney is considering trust. I believe at our firm, our results speak for themselves. Most of the people we represent come from past clients who have referred friends, family members, other people they love to us to represent them in the same way we represented the persons who referred them. It's the greatest compliment any law firm could get. And I believe that if you come to our firm, we'll earn your trust. Welcome back to Legal Lines. I'm Locke Meredith. Again, very pleased to have on the show for the first time the treasurer for the state of Louisiana, John Schroeder. John, we were talking about probably what is your favorite thing to do in your position as treasurer, and that's to give back to people money they never thought they were due. Yeah. It, Quickly summarize that again, because yeah, I'm sure everybody's yeah, you know, listening. Yeah, I love it. Look, I get fired up on it. This isn't tax dollars. This isn't fees. This isn't self-generated money. These are deposits, uh, paychecks, um, life insurance policies, life insurance policies 
you know, um, uh, could be royalties, stocks and bonds. You know, there's a lot of different ways. Well, right now on the books are, are about $850 million owed to somebody in Louisiana. So you have in your possession $850 million on paper, I wish. Okay. And that's what I said That's what earlier. you're worried about. So, well, how much do you have? Well, we have only what we collect on an annual on a year, basis. Because, so what you described as being what was always done in the past is, if you had 50 million for that year, just picking a number 50 million, and only 25 of it was claimed, the legislature came in and got the other 25 and spin it. Right, minus, minus $15 million on a bond for I-49. So that's exactly what happened. It wasn't until uh, September of 2018, when we were 20 million short, that anybody ever stopped to question how, Is that, the, how, 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 how does this work? So we went back, read the law, long story short, I, I couldn't find any place, my lawyers couldn't find any place that basically said we should have been spending the money. It just sort of happened. But this program used to be under the governor's office. And so it was easy because nobody stopped them. So the governors of, of, of the past spent the excess money. Well, and as you mentioned earlier, technology, all the computers and tracking yeah. and digital money and everything enables yeah. you to track down who's supposed to have we're, it. We're, we're going to do a, a much better job. We, we looked the day the fiscal session was over last year after having 207,000 claims the first thing I did was bring in an expert to look at our processes to see how we could, my, my division director looked at me like I was nuts. But, but look, this is how I operate every day. You're either going backwards or forwards. So I don't treat the Department of Treasury any way different than I treat my business. You found something that was wrong and you're trying to fix we're, it? That's what we're there to do. So it's exciting. And it's I, not the state's money. That's the bottom. I think that's what's kind of rubbing me the wrong way is because I challenge if the state doesn't have a law somehow legally, constitutionally taking that money. Yeah, just because you've done it for so long doesn't make it right. You know, that wasn't the intent of the program and it has grown into that. They've become used to it. And every state in the nation has every one of these, the nation right? Has them. But lock, here's the bottom line. We can lock that money in trust and protect it. And then the state can have the dividend. And 20 years from now, 25 years from now, it'd be t kicking off $60 million a year. It's hard to save money. And government and saving, those two words are never talked about in the same se sentence. So I found a way <laughs> that we could both have our cake and eat it too. We'll protect the a win -win. money. win-win. That's what it's it win -win is. a win-win for both. And, and, so and we'll actually, see. the money the state would take would increase over time because this pot's going to get bigger and bigger because not as many people Correct. are going to be... So, I, so look, it's important. People need to go to latreasury.com, click on unclaimed property, follow those directions. Don't forget to check your business. A lot of businesses have money. Um, you can check your family member and call them and email them, say go through it. We're hoping to upgrade our technology because we still do everything by paper. At the end of the fiscal year, I walk down the hall, there's hundreds of boxes. <laughs> we need to get out of this. Right. It's, it's the 21st century. Right. We need to- And to, floods happen. Yeah, and well, we need to invest money uh, into this program and, and, and not create, a, uh, it's, we've almost created an incentive not to return this money because of spending a balance in the state general fund. So I hope to change that. So is anyone proposing somehow to make that money by law yes. become owned by the state? Uh, no, nobody has nobody has filed a bill that says this this money belongs to the state. They're Are they already trying to eliminate your ability to get it in yeah, the they're, future. They're, they're already doing it, so I, that's why I'm questioning it. So we, the Speaker of the House, is carrying a bill that creates the trust, and we'll we'll settle it once and for all. Um, you know, even even if the even if uh, the courts rule and we're, we're in a little dispute, even if the courts ruled um, against me, it still doesn't make it right. You know, um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see. But we got a lot going on. You know, I've been in. I was in Austin working on some real estate for one of retirement boards. I sit on 37 boards uh, uh, as state treasurer. I mean, the treasurer's got a lot of responsibilities. But you asked earlier about about my responsibilities. Let me tell you what one of my key. How many people do you have? Well, around 90. What is the size of your budget? Just um, it's about an eight million uh, administrative budget. Good guy. Smallest, smallest department in state government, but I really believe one of the major roles and one of the reasons I ran for this job is the influence you can have on policy. And explain to folks what you mean by policy. Well, financial habits. 
and 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 death. what the legislature does, yeah, what the what, what the, the governor what the does. governor does. I mean, let's face it, all these guys are coming from different walks of life, and and I'm a business guy, and quite frankly, I believe we need more business people in government right now because they know how to handle money, they know how to say no. That's a that's a two letter word that you very rarely hear a lot in government, but government's growing faster than we, especially in Louisiana, have the ability to keep up with it. So. I've, I believe part of my job is talking about that kind of stuff, talking about good policies, good fiscal policies that's good long term, because we, we, get, we get very narrow minded and we make decisions for today right. and we don't think about tomorrow. Well, I know. And I mean tomorrow, 20 years from now. Just like this trust fund. This trust fund, we start today. 20 years from now could be kicking off $60 million a year. Which takes care of a lot of problems or helps with a helps. lot. Because I know in the past, it, uh, you know, we were one billion short every year. We're paying right. off uh, it, it, people with one-time money when it's a recurring bill, like electric bill coming in every month, right. you're using something you got from granny to pay it. Well, our debt's it, out of control, our, our spending's out of control. We always talk about um, spending this, spending that, but we never talk about reducing that, and, and, and we have to do some things that, that hold government in check from growing faster than you have the ability to keep up with it, or they're keep, going to constantly come back and ask you for more taxes. And you see what's happened in some of our cities. It's, it's really It's tough. devastating the rural communities. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that quickly. Yes. They're just running out of money, so they could, yeah. people are leaving. They're coming to you guys saying, can we borrow some money? Another, another thing that I, that I do as treasurer, I sit on a three-person board that oversees the, the, the municipalities that are uh, having fiscal problems. Quickly tell the folks about the vault, tour the vault, yeah. because that sounds like something kids would just so love I, to do. So when I became treasurer, I know we'd run out of time, when we became treasurer, the, the, they have this vault that was built in eight, 1932. Well, it looked like Walgreens. They have, it was packed with supplies and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the big it, old silver yeah, bar. Yeah, it's, it's a huge thing, and I said, man, this would be, I turned it into my conference room. And then when I became, when, then I got elected full, uh, for four years, we turned it into a little, it is our conference room, but that we have some things in there that are a like hundred years old. So we turned it into a little museum. Now people come to see the vault and the treasury. And then you get to talk to them and educate. Yeah, and we're I, all I would sure encourage every school yeah. teacher to do that with their class. John, it's been wonderful having you Welcome. join us. I look forward to doing it again. Yes, sir. Folks, thank you for joining us. Legal Lines, Locke Meredith, and with my first time very special guest, John Schroeder, the treasurer for the state of Louisiana. See you next time.